According to current theories, it is believed that before the Big Bang, the universe consisted of static elementary energies we named them as particles. These particles, which are forms of energy, were named quarks and gluons. Later, another form of energy which we call photons, hit those energies we named quarks, triggered them, and they began forming protons and neutrons, which are the building blocks of energy we call atoms. Atoms combined together formed molecules, and this group of blocks of energy named it as matter. So, matter is essentially a group of these energy blocks, that have combined together through the interaction of photons with quarks, in the presence of gluons in a static form. Gluons are considered to be constantly exchanged between quarks, but they remain confined within the particle they hold together, and cannot exist as isolated particles outside of it. So, in a sense, they can be considered as static within the particle. Over the past decade, physicists around the world have been trying to recreate the conditions, known as quark-gluon plasma, by slamming together nuclei of atoms with enough energy to produce trillion-degree temperatures. When a photon hits a quark several things can happen, depending on the electromagnetic energy which carries the photon and the type of quark involved. Generally speaking, the photon can either scatter off the quark, or be absorbed by it. In the latter case, the energy of the photon can be used to create a pair of other energies, such as a quark and an antiquark, or to excite the quark to a higher energy state. In simple terms, exciting the quark to a higher energy state means adding more energy to the quark, which causes it to move to a higher level of energy. It's like adding heat to water, which causes it to change from a liquid state to a gaseous state. When a quark is in a higher energy state, it may behave differently and interact differently with other particles compared to when it's in a lower energy state. When we say that quarks behave differently in the presence of gluons, we mean that their behavior is influenced by the interactions with the gluons. The gluons carry the strong force that holds quarks together, and the way in which the quarks interact with the gluons can cause them to behave differently than they would in the absence of those interactions. The strong force is created by these energy forces we call gluons, which carry these two abilities. The first ability is to hold together. This ability we named as color. The second ability is to create or transmit. This ability we named as charge. Quarks, which are the building blocks of protons and neutrons, have similar but not the same abilities as gluons which called similarly as color charge. However, these quark abilities are always found in combinations, such that the overall sum of these abilities are neutral or paused. This is known as color confinement in quarks. The color property in gluons, refers to their ability to hold quarks together through the strong nuclear force, while the charge property in gluons, refers to the ability which allows them to create and transmit that force between particles. The color property in quarks now, is the ability to hold quarks together and transmit the strong force, and the color charge is the property in quarks, that allows quarks to interact with each other through the exchange of gluons. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more like this.